Hello friends, good afternoon. Welcome back to Bush Poppy Farm. I'm Heather Murano, a gardener and flower farmer in zone 9B in the San Francisco Bay Area in Northern California. And I'm really glad you're here. So yesterday in our video, we did a farm tour and then I worked. <laughs> This morning, uh, I went out to the farm and I harvested. I got some good stuff actually. Um, and I'm looking forward to building bouquets later this afternoon. But uh, we're back home because I need to start doing major cleanup uh, to prepare for this uh, garden tour um, day after tomorrow. So I figured now would be a good time to do an early May uh, tour of the home garden. So let's go. Okay, first thing I wanna show you is the, uh, the deer bed. <laughs> this is where deer uh, sleep at night. And uh, I haven't visually seen them do this, but this is what it looks like when deer have been hanging out. Now I'm not worried about this at all. These are the daffodils, they're done blooming. Um, they'll stay like this until they're all brown and then I'll pull up the leaves and it'll just be mostly bare. There'll be some California poppies in here and this is all peppermint back here. Um, for the rest of the season um, until next spring when the daffodils come back. Um, I do notice here a blackberry. That is a native blackberry. It's full of thorns. Our entire creek bed back here is full of them. Uh, I do want to remove this because, because it's thorny <laughs> and it's just extremely aggressive. So I'll have to go in there with special gloves because even the rose gloves, you just can't, it, they bite right through. Um, so I've got a couple of lavender here in pots that I need to plant somewhere. Uh, there are lavender in these pots here, but they're not looking so great. Um, probably need a whole lot of fertilization. I'm gonna do something over here. Uh, this has a lot of daffodils in it, but only a few came up this year. So, and it's also not irrigated. So I'm gonna, come up with some kind of plan for this. Not sure what I'm going to do yet. I might just plant these lavender there because this is a very dry area and lavender is very drought tolerant once it's established. You see we have a yarrow right here in Achillea um, so, and this California poppy. So I might just put some lavender in here and then fill the rest with California natives. All right, so coming into the garden, we have, um, tomatoes in here which should be bigger but <clears throat> it's been really cold the last couple nights 39 degrees fahrenheit night before last and 40 degrees fahrenheit this morning um so they're those and the peppers are kind of just hanging out and but it's going to get much warmer as the week goes on so we've got some tomatoes got some um got some Utah tall celery. I don't know if it's going to do anything. We've got a little bit of red acre cabbage and then there's uh, lettuces here. There's some romaine and I think that's Salanova peppermint. <laughs> like I said, this peppermint used to be in this bed here a long time ago when we first created the beds. It was a single plant and, and you know as peppermint escapes it just takes over. I'm okay with that because it's beautiful, smells amazing, and I harvest it all year for tea. Uh, onion bed still not doing much. I set rat traps out thinking that it was rats that uh, were eating, nibbling on my stuff. And I caught uh, two. But what I realized as I saw them hopping through the <laughs> driveway the other day is it's bunnies. So the rat traps aren't gonna help with that. And so what I did was I sprinkled uh, the repels all. It's a rabbit repellent, um, which is basically uh, cinnamon and garlic. And so it smells really good but uh, for us, but they don't dig it. So I don't know, we'll see what happens, but they've been nibbling the tops of my um, onions off. So I don't know if that bed's gonna actually do anything. Pomegranate, definitely all leafed out. We did get some flowers. I don't know. I mean, this is, we've been getting flowers on this thing for three years and never gotten fruit. So we will see. I don't know if any of these are gonna produce fruit. I would love them to. Uh, the grape is leafing out. It's looking really lovely. I did get grapes on this last year. You can see back here, the deer have on the other side of the fence have been 
chewing on it. <laughs> uh, but where it is inside the garden, they can't get to it. We did have grapes on this last year, but they, um, they never fully developed. So we'll see what happens. This is one of our blackberries. You can see uh, it is really getting going now. We've got blossoms on it, which is great because the bees are just going to love this. And it's so close to their hive. Their hives are right over there. Um, so we have a bunch of these blackberries down this fence line. Uh, asparagus bed did not expect anything to happen with it this year because this is a brand new bed. I only put it in last year. Here's uh, one. I don't even know if that's asparagus. Anyway, I'm leaving these crowns in here and we'll see maybe next year we'll get a couple of spears to harvest. So again with the blackberries, I did a major prune on this fig tree. Uh, it had all these extra big branches that just weren't doing much, so I cut them way, way back. Now it will start to branch more, which is going to be better. Um, blueberries, you can see there are lots of berries on these blueberries. Hopefully I will get to them before the birds do. We usually get a really nice harvest off of this, this, this bush and that bush, and then we have a few more down the road. Um, and again, more blackberries. So lots of flowers in here, lots of pollinators coming to visit. It's, it's really lovely. I'm enjoying it a whole lot. Um, and I just let these guys keep, just go wherever they want. This whole area can get filled in. There's a lemon balm back there that's rogue. Um, but again, love it. We've got lavender, all that good stuff. Pepper bed. They're still looking mighty small because like I said, it's been cold. So I'm hoping now that we're moving into warm weather, their growth will start picking up. And we have one potato from last year that's popping up right here. <laughs> Garlic, looking good. In fact, I should start paying attention. We should start seeing scapes pretty soon because we usually harvest our scapes at the end of May. Um, I love garlic scapes. We make a pesto out of them that is just delicious. Okay, still with the empty um, bags because I'm waiting on my uh, sweet potato slips to come in the mail. Once they do, those will get potted up. This is the backside of the Budlia. I don't know, I say this all the time, but everything in this pollinator patch gets cut down to the ground, about six inches above the ground every early spring, and it just always fills back in, but gets more and more bushy every time, which I love. And look at the rose. This rose arch, every year, it just gets better and better. I am gonna have to pull these in and tie them, you know, twist them and tie them up so that they'll um, be out of the way of the pathway <laughs> for Thursday, but it's just looking so lovely. And then this bed, the peony bed, everything got knocked down by that, uh, that last rain. Oh, I, um, I popped in some, Comfrey back here, as well as a Rudbeckia triloba and a Rudbeckia cherry brandy. Um, but yeah, the peonies are looking good. I have harvested on these. I actually need to cut these ladies here. This is a Festiva Maxima and um, big blousy white peony with a little bit of pink in them, hot pink. But yeah, you can see they all have like laying over. So I'm just going to come through with a, with some twine and just kind of corral them up against the fence, not tight against the fence, just to be upright. Um, Cause I don't care about the foliage from the daffodils, but I don't want to crush the peonies. These are actually Brussels sprouts, which somehow survived. Everything else was eaten by either rodents or bunnies. Um, there's a pumpkin that is still there. I'm happy about that. This was a watermelon, but you can see it got munched. I did come through and thin the fruit on this apple tree. So we only have two apples per spur. Um, so that should be good. Uh, this peony, gorgeous, but I don't think it's gonna bloom this year. That's okay. These uh, are, this is only their second year. So with peonies as cut flowers, they tell you you really shouldn't harvest until the third year. Um, I've been, I should be disbudding instead of letting them go to flower, but these guys are looking super healthy. So I'm just taking the few flowers that they're giving. Another look at the rose trellis. Oh, I'm just so pleased with this. It's so beautiful. This is the vision I had when I installed it, and I'm so glad it's finally come to life. Now, the other apple trees, this one uh, fruited last year, did not fruit this year. It still has scale. I keep picking it off. It's so gross. 
Um, and this apple tree also has scale. I mean, it's okay. It's not enough that's gonna kill the tree or anything. Here it is again. So basically there's a soft bodied insect underneath that red cap. So I just, and they produce something called honeydew. That's what the ants like. So I just keep scraping them off. Oh, look, it did flower down here. Huh, well, maybe we'll actually get some apples on that tree. That is a honey crisp. Okay, and then this one did flower and those I'm not so sure we actually have a lot of buds on most of these stems but I don't know that they were pollinated they're not looking too promising so we'll see the pear uh the god this guy's getting huge I need to do a major prune um it did flower as well and it looks like a few of them uh, did get pollinated. I'm not sure about the others, so we may get a little bit of fruit. Um, but again, they may abort at the last minute. Here's a few more up here. Oh, I would love to have some pears since we've put this thing in as almost four years ago. Uh, and then the plum tree, I did come through and thin this one as well. I hope you can see in there, there's lots of plums. Uh, most of these branches have plums, so I came through and pulled off a whole bunch so that there's not too many on each branch. Um, that does two things. One, it protects the branch from breaking from the weight of the fruit. Two, it gives you bigger fruit. So if you have a whole bunch of plums, you know, or any kind of fruit, apples, pears, whatever, on a single branch, um, those fruits are gonna be small. And because there's only so much energy the plant has to put into producing that fruit. So if you remove some of it, you take some of the weight off the plant, some of the stress off the plant, and you'll get much bigger fruit. Fewer fruit, but bigger fruit. Okay, the mustards have finally bolted and I've started cutting them off at the, the chickens. So they don't really dig the, the mustard leaves themselves, but they love brassica flowers. So every day they've been getting um, a stalk of brassica flowers and they've just been loving it. Um, all right, so here we've got another pumpkin and something else that got eaten, munched down. Our artichokes are finally looking great, putting on growth. Um, now that it's warm and they're big enough to fight off small pests, we've got um, another, I think that's actually a watermelon there. Uh, peonies and old daffodils along the fence line here. All those, like I said, will not get pestered with until they're brown. Then I'll pull those uh, brown leaves off. Potatoes. Actually, looking pretty good, except these are yellow. So to me, that means they need some nitrogen, some fertilization. So I'm definitely going to come in here with a with a dose of fertilizer for them. Those back there are looking much better. So I wanna make sure these guys stay nice and green. Okay, continuing on down, um, we've got some little lettuces in this front row, some onions, cabbages, which are heading up, you guys. I'm so surprised. These got so decimated by slugs, I was like, oh, I might as well just pull them out. But they started to head up and I thought, I'm just gonna keep them. And you know, you can eat these leaves too. They're these would be good for like cabbage rolls or something because they're they're pretty tough but my chickens love them as well um here we've got some festival acorn that i direct sowed thankfully is coming up so this whole bed is lots of different squashes um pumpkins and uh winter squash I'm really happy to see that butternut squash i'm so thrilled i really hope it survives because that is like my favorite squash favorite winter squash uh, we do have one summer squash, I think, in here. This one is a neck squash. But you can see the lettuces are looking good. And the um, sweet alyssum, we've got beans coming up. And our corn is looking pretty good. I'm actually really glad I bought those corn transplants because you can see hardly any of the seeded corn came up. Oh, there's another. Those, that's a sweet meat variety, those, um, those direct sown ones did germinate, that's great. So we've got beans along the front here. And I can't remember off the top of my head what they are. I've got them on the uh, seed time chart, so I can look that up. But big treats for the chickens. <laughs> These plants are just so gorgeous. This is mustard, a Chinese mustard. It's very spicy, lovely. 
and just a beautiful, I mean, it was the only thing in the garden over the winter and nothing wants to eat it. Nothing, because it's really, really spicy. And so it was lovely to come out here when everything else was getting eaten and still see this beautiful plant. Okay, so beans in the front. We've got one watermelon here that has so far survived attack. I don't even know what kind this is. Blacktail Mountain. Uh, here's another Jardale pumpkin of uh, direct stone. And then we've got our corn. So like these little, little ones are the ones that actually did germinate um, from my direct sowing, but everything else, a lot of them did get eaten by, uh, by rodents, but that's okay. That's why I got starts. Okay. I need to come through and fill my Oyas, uh, cause I know that they're getting very low. Uh, these tomatoes not looking that great. I mean, they're not looking bad, but not looking that great, but I need to fill the Oyas so that make sure these beds stay hydrated. Uh, we put that kind of looks like comfrey. What did I plant there? I don't even remember. I'm gonna have to go back and look. <laughs> this is a persimmon. Uh, it, this is its very first season in this spot um, and it takes some abuse. Um, so we'll see what happens. Uh, this is a nectarine. You can see a single one here. I hear you. Uh, I have fruit trees inside the chicken run. Um, to provide shade in the future for them. Uh, but every stone fruit I have this year has leaf curl. And it's crazy because I did treat everything with horticultural oil. This is the first year I've ever used horticult horticultural oil and it's the first year I've ever had leaf curl. I'm not the only one either. Uh, like people all up and down the coast uh, of California are complaining of the same thing. So it may be a function of the weather we had this winter. Um, but these trees are producing fruit and it's really cute. I just leave them for the birds because they'll jump up and grab them and eat them even when they're very small and not very, um, not very ripe. That's real cute. We've got some peppers in this bed. We've got this passion fruit vine, which I'm hoping eventually will take over this whole chicken coop and, um, It'll give us fruit, but also provide, again, lovely shade for them. We've got some beautiful collards. Oh, they feel so good, too. I need to pull off, like, the, the eaten parts, but these collards look so yummy. I'm saving them because I think on Memorial Day weekend we will do barbecue and we will make collards. Um, and then we've got some more cabbages, which will bolt because there's no way they're going to put on heads, but that's okay. We can eat the leaves and I can also feed them to the chickens. Um, I do have um, one zucchini rompicante that survived the other. Oh no, actually I don't. This one is a delicata squash. I had three zucchini rompicante here and they all got eaten. Oh, except for that one. <laughs> so this one is a uh, golden zucchini and this trellis is here because I'm going to train some of it as much as I can up the trellis um, just to keep it off the pathway area. Our peas are finally starting to climb the trellis. I'm really looking forward to harvesting peas. I love peas so much. It's taken them a really long time to get going this year. Usually we have peas by now. Over here we have beans and I need to plant a whole lot more because we have this big open space here that needs to get filled. Uh, we've been eating on the radishes and so have the chickens. <laughs> we've got some beans in here and you can see they've been being munched on as well, uh, but they are, they did germinate at least. I'll just probably put a few more in. These are black Hungarian peppers. They are struggling. Um, mostly I think because of the uh, amount of sun they're not getting. <laughs> We've got some peonies back here that I've already harvested on. The rest of this is St. John's wort, which is uh, just all down in the creek bed. It has a really pretty flower, and of course it has lots of medicinal properties. Um, we've got some basically garbage here. Not really garbage, I keep using this stuff, but <laughs> blueberry, another blueberry bush, uh, which has very tiny blueberries on it. Um, this is the first year it's uh, bloomed for us because it's a pretty new plant, but you can see some of that mint because this used to be up where the mint is, some of that mint uh, po uh, populated this bit, this pot as well. Elderberry bushes, and look, that's not gonna be enough for any harvest this year, but I love to see it, because these just went in uh, at the end of last summer. For beans, a rogue strawberry plant, I have no idea, no idea, because we never had strawberries down here. 
why this is here, but it gets to stay. <laughs> and my camera keeps stopping and dying on me, even though it's got a full battery. So I'm moving to my phone. Um, the beans are coming along, but you can see there's lots of, you know, lots of things eating them. So I'm just going to keep planting beans because the more I plant, um, the more I'll have that I can afford to have some get taken by the animals. <laughs> Okay, and then we've got some of the, the cucumbers that I sowed back there are coming up. I'm going to put a new batch of a different variety on this side. All right, so it, I think I need to find support for this elder flower, uh, these elderberry bushes, because they're really leaning. Um, so I'll probably stake them for a while. Um, we've got a grape there, another grape there, blackberries, blueberries. This is a jujube, which uh, this has never produced for me, but this is only its second year. Um, blackberry, blackberry, blackberry. Another pot with blueberries and then more blackberries down there. So lots of fruit. Um, again, another stone fruit, These, this one and that one are nectarines. And look at the leaf curl. It's just crazy. Good Lord, all the trucks. Okay, so we've got cucumbers going in here that I will tie up these poles once they get big enough. I did direct sow some okra here and I keep watering this area and just nothing's coming up. So I don't know if we'll have any okra this year, which is a real bummer. Maybe I'll sow again. <laughs> all right, here we've got a little line of tomatoes uh, with the Florida weave. We've still got some radish here on either side that we're still working on. Um, this, I believe, is an Eryngium flower from last year. <laughs> and of course, the marigolds in here. And then more, uh, these are zucchinis, different types of summer squashes in here, and they'll take up most of the space. Um, so more squashes. These are two pole uh, varieties that need to get um, steaks soon. And then we've got these tomatoes here. They're all kind of looking yellow. I think everything in here needs a bit of a fertilize. Um, these guys on the floor to weave. And then the final bed here is more peppers and nasturtiums on the front. So they'll all spill over the front and that'll be super pretty. But this was a, is a row of carrots, but only a few germinated. And at this point, I think I'm just gonna stick some more plants in here and not waste that space. I do have more peppers I can put in, so I'll probably just do that. So this mess I need to clean up before Thursday. Got pots down there, like there's all those, those are buckets and um, six packs and stuff like that that all need to get washed. Um, these are all seedlings that need to go in the ground. <laughs> this is leftover Tweedia and Scabiosa Salmon Queen. Um, actually, is that Salmon Queen or Black Knight? Black Knight. Uh, those will probably all go in the cottage garden. I might put a few up front, but you can see back here, it's being hidden by this table. This azalea, pretty white azalea is blooming. And our Japanese maples have leafed out. So here's where I need to do the most work. Uh, I need to come through and get rid of all these old, this was uh, obviously an azalea that's already bloomed. I wanna come through and clean all that up because those dead blooms don't look very nice. Um, the, this camellia is finished blooming. I wanna clean off all those old blooms. It's, it's actually super labor intensive, but um, it is nice when it's done. So I'll be doing that all along this walkway, cleaning out these old blooms and uh, these ones that are still blooming, at least, are looking really nice. I have not pruned these azaleas in a couple of years. I don't do it every year. And I'm not thinking the shape is that bad. I think I'm gonna leave them for another year. I might take a few of the random stick, you know, stems that are sticking up that seem out of shape. I'll probably pull some of those off, but I'm not gonna do a hard prune. Um, but I am going to lop off this guy this azalea, um, we had to have our entire sewer line replaced two years ago. Um, you can see it there. They did trenchless work, but they did have to open up the pathway here and this just got super damaged. Um, so I'll pull that out finally. Um, 
It's funny because some of it is still, oh no, that's a different one back here, but this one doesn't look that great either. So again, I wanna get rid of all the spent blooms, um, cut back this Katoni Aster, <laughs> it's a little out of control, um, and just tidy it up a little bit so it doesn't look so messy. Um, the jades and these containers are fine for now. Um, if I have time, I'll come through and cut these boxwoods into lollipop shapes, which I usually do. Um, but the rest of this kind of stays wild because it is wild, right? Um, we've got Laura Petalum back there and there's another Laura Petalum and Japanese maple. There's an azalea that's finished blooming. We've got um, geranium in here. Here's another azalea that's basically dead. So I need to come in and cut back all of that. Um, this hillside uh, was basically just bare dirt when we moved in. It had Laura Petalum along this front that were enormous, like seven feet tall, um, and was a weird, it blocked view. Um, it was really strange. So we took all that out, brought in these stones, a lot of compost, and made, did our own planting. Uh, but it's tough underneath redwood trees because it's pretty acidic soil. Like I said, this is the walkway area that I need to do the most work on. Um, thankfully, all of the daffodil uh, leaves are still green right now. <laughs> so when they come on Thursday, it won't look horrible because this does look rough for a while uh, when these leaves are all turning brown. But like I need to come through and like trim all this away, you know, cut back some stuff. Like I never, usually I do this in very early spring. You know, I got to trim away some of this dead time. Um, I normally would have come in, come in and given this lavender a big haircut and cut back all of that uh, monkey flower, like all these dead stems, but I ran out of time and I didn't do it. So I need to do it now uh, just to clean it up. It's better for the plants too, but I'm not going to give the lavenders a haircut because they're about to bloom. So they will get a haircut after they bloom. Um, but the nice thing about this being so dense is that, <laughs> oh, this, this whole lavender got pulled up. Wow, that's crazy. Uh, nice thing about this being so dense is that now that it's starting to get really grown in, it just looks wild, which was kind of the intent. And so I'm not, not too worried. It's actually a little bit less work now that it's more grown in. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm gonna be focusing on um, this afternoon. And as you can see, it's nice and shady here right now. So it's a really good time to do that. Okay, nobody is really gonna come back here uh, although I might have to lead them through here instead of the, in the house. But um, you can see we've got wild blackberry going there. There's more of that geranium, um, some aragonium, I think, or whatever that daisy is, and this jasmine. These are redwood trees up here. And then we've got this uh, Japanese maple and another Laura Petalum, and we've got a big California buckeye back there. <laughs> um, but I do love, this little mat that is growing of both Lamium and Lobelia. It's so pretty. And we had a nice show back here this year of um, snowdrops and some small daffodils and crocus and things like that. And this is, um, I think it's sweet woodruff. I could be wrong. But again, just spreading by itself. We have a couple of Euchra in here. Um, and just this is all filling in nicely because this is what I see from my my kitchen window. All right, so of course I'm going to blow leaves and all that kind of stuff. Um, this whole area I haven't done anything with in a long time. The leaves I just left there as mulch. It's like false Solomon seal, um, ferns, ivy coming over from the edge. The reason I haven't really done anything with this is this is the retaining wall that needs to be replaced. I don't know if you can see how much it's leaning. Um, it's quite a bit but we can't do that this year since we're doing a house renovation. Okay, this bed, I uh, pruned back the leaves that were dipping into the soil here in both of these containers, but this bed is starting to look good. The Wygela is waking up. I did pop some uh, extra dahlias in here and the lavender is going to bloom soon, looking really nice. Over here, another lavender, very close to bloom. So it's like all this, like stuff I need to clean up back here. Um, this guy uh, planted last year, put on this trellis. It'll just continue to fill that space in. Um, and then we've got our citrus, which is, 
This is a Meyer lemon. Smells amazing right now. Look at all those blossoms on there. This is a um, key lime. This hydrangea is getting ready to bloom. This is just a basic macrophylla, um, blue or pink flowers. I think they're usually kind of like purplish. Um, and then this is another Meyer lemon. And again, more blossoms getting ready to come out. Strawberry tower looking good. And the herb tower over here also looking good. We've been harvesting on that for baking and cooking. Okay, cottage garden. Uh, we do have some columbine that is blooming. She's pretty, huh? So all of this, uh, this is usually really huge. This is a lupine, but you can see all the stems the bunny's been eating. So I keep popping things in here and the bunny keeps eating them, but it's okay. There's enough in here that um, he or she is not getting to and it'll be fine. Um, but these lupines are gorgeous when they get going. Big purple and pink flowers. Uh, so we've got some lavenders in here and again, still the daffodil um, greenery. We've got uh, foxglove blooming. So I do have to do a little bit of cleanup in here, but not too much. It's just so pretty and, you know, messy. And I kind of like that about cottage gardens. Uh, and you can see there's still some space back here that I can pop some things in. Those are, um, those are foxglove. They won't bloom this year. They'll bloom next year. And this is all germander, which is a nice, nice filling in. These guys are done blooming, but oh, they were gorgeous. Okay. So we've got some Catmint, Nepeta here with more Dusty Miller. And these are just getting ready. These are the um, black suited iris. I've got one down here. Look at that. Isn't that just stunning? Black suited iris. The, the color is just amazing. Oh man, they make me so happy. Um, I have some more iris in here. Um, like these guys. I don't know what these are going to be. I can't remember. Uh, I planted them last year and they haven't bloomed yet. So it'll be a surprise. <laughs> I have a nice little collection, but you know, as this is Gara, so this will get nice and big. I have another one down there, um, but I do see lots of spaces in here. There's some salvias in here, but I see some spaces in here that I can fill in with bigger plants in the back. Um, and then most of this carpet is like seedlings of various plants that I've had in here before. And for now, I'm just leaving them to be ground cover because that means no bare dirt. And we've got some verbena. And let's see, we've got some sweet alyssum in there. There's some creeping thyme on the ground, more lupins and a big fat bumblebee. Okay, and more foxglove, salvia, and then some tiny little delphiniums. And we do have California poppy in here. So another salvia, and then that's a budlia. Now we did have hollyhocks here last year. I don't know that it'll come back, which I thought it would, but we'll see. Um, and then some more lupins and stuff. Now this pot and this pot are the same. They have a spiller in the front and an Ace 55 bush tomato in the middle. There is some kind, I can't remember what this flower is in the back. I got it at the nursery coolest flowers. I think it's, I, I'm pretty sure it's a California native. I think it's some kind of monkey flower, but look at that. Isn't that the coolest looking flower? Um, but it's not doing that great, um, but it's still in there. So we'll leave it for now. And this bed, we've got some osteospermum, lots of lamb's ear that is getting ready to bloom. And I kind of come through here and pull up these ugh, grass stems. I also need to mow before Thursday. We've got helichrysum and the roses that I did tie back the other day because they were just going nuts. But this is it's such a beautiful rose. Look at these buds unopened, but so, so pretty. And we have some hydrangeas here. All right, more roses. Just look, at they're just everywhere. I love it. I'll come through and deadhead um, tomorrow. And then these two containers are exactly the same. They are sweet alyssum and strawberries. And I did have clematis in the middle last year 
of both of these and it climbed the trellis and bloomed once and then died and never came back. So I sowed some seeds of morning glory in there, but so far they haven't germinated. But I mean, look how healthy and happy these plants are. One of the succulent gardens and I haven't gotten around to adding new ones to it yet, but hopefully it's probably not before the garden tour though. Now these are two containers that used to have various flowers in them, but now they're just herb containers. We've got yarrow and thyme. We've got a sage over here, and this is a mint, and I can't remember which kind. I think that's just regular spearmint. Anyway, looks so pretty. All of our ferns are filling in. I mean, it's so barren in the wintertime because they all die back, but oh, they're so lush and green. <laughs> I love it. It covers a multitude of sins, I'll tell you that. Uh, this is a hillside anchored by ivy, and uh, we couldn't, couldn't have it any other way. We have so much erosion on this hillside that comes into underneath this old retaining wall. This is another reason we need to replace it and put real drainage back there. Um, so yeah, thank God, thank goodness for the ivy. This is a Pyrrhus japonica. These, these were so small when we moved in in 2017. They're just enormous now. Um, and then this is the Fire Island hydrangea and it is getting close, you guys. And these flower heads are absolutely enormous. They're so beautiful. So I can't wait to show you. Uh, all that's in this pot right now is this jasmine. It is looking rough. I think it needs a lot of fertilization. I did give it fresh compost, but that doesn't seem to be doing the trick. So I think I'm gonna do something else. It needs some nitrogen, I think, and maybe some iron. We'll see. Uh, nice big stand of geranium. It's already flowered for the year, but looks so pretty. I need to come through here and mow. You can see we haven't even mowed yet this year. It is May. <laughs> and then this is a little heuchera bed. I love heuchera. They just love the shade. These guys look so pretty back here. We've got hellebores, and then I did put a pop of comfrey in there because I need comfrey. Um, and then the rest of this back here is just kind of wild, not wasteland, but <laughs> no one ever goes back here. It's mostly oak trees. Um, so, you know, that's like these plants were all here when we moved in, uh, except for the heuchera and stuff. I, I put all these stuff in there, but look at how many blooms are still left on this um, hellebore here. That's just crazy to me. Uh, we have one limelight hydrangea there. We've, this is a, oh, I can't remember. I'll put the name on the screen. I'm having a hard time with words today, <laughs> uh, but another heuchera. And we've got um, a mirror image on both sides. This is limelight hydrangea. This one too, they get cut back every year so that they'll give me new stems. Um, and so we have a matching set on either side, but I am going to pop in. Um, we're missing a heuchera here. It died for some reason. I think maybe it got slammed by too much water when we had so much rain. It overflowed from the rain barrel and it just got slammed. And I think that's what killed it. But uh, tons of seedlings I still need to deal with uh, that are all hardened off. And then in here, more seedlings that still need to be dealed with, dealt with. <laughs> Uh, these are the next succession of, succession of dahlias um, that need to go out. Not yet, though. They're still way too small. Then we've got here, this is all um, amaranth and some more basils back there. And this is a bunch of herbs that are kind of outgrown their soil blocks. I don't even know what I'm going to do with those. I don't have the space for them yet. These are the sunflowers uh, that are going to a client. And then there's some additional flowers back there. Up here, this is all stuff that just doesn't have a home right now. Um, we've got some lettuces, you know, kales and things like that. I think these are just going to end up getting composted because I don't have any place to put them. And then we have a tray of uh, ornamental grasses, which I'm looking forward to planting out soon at the farm. And ginger, ginger root, which finally has some has started to sprout. And so <laughs> I need to find a good home for it and get it set up because it's going to have to be in a container that I can move into the greenhouse over the winter or even into the house over the winter to keep relatively warm so it doesn't die completely. Um, you know, so the tuber doesn't die. Uh, but it'll be awesome if we can get some 
homegrown ginger this year. And then all that's left is a couple dahlias that sprouted that need to find a home. Um, I'll probably just pop these into the cottage garden because that would be perfect for a cottage garden. Um, we've got some almost failed seedlings here. This is Saponaria and that is um, chamomile and we had that big storm and I didn't come out to water them and they burned up. So there's only a few left. This is basically a big fail, <laughs> but that's okay. I didn't have major plans for them. And then this container needs to go out. It's just too heavy for me to lift. So I need to ask Mike to bring that out. And for folks who are new here, this is the backside of the greenhouse. I've got my compost bin back there. That's the pool equipment, um, Japanese maple. And then we have a nice steep slope here. Um, very deep leaf litter, <laughs> lots of nice leaf mold. These are our um, redwoods. This is a little redwood grove. And there's a shed down there that was here when we moved in and it's scary because it's like a rat hotel. <laughs> never, never go in there. There's nothing, we don't do anything with it. Um, there's some things in there, but they're not ours. They're just old. Um, yeah, so, and then the creek back here on the other side of the fence and this whole hillside is ivy. So that's it. That is a early May garden tour, and uh, you know, of the whole home property. And you can see I have some work cut out for me. Um, I'm not too concerned with it looking pristine because I'm just not that type of a gardener. And even though these are garden center, I mean, garden club gals, uh, I think they'll, it'll be pretty clear that I'm a more lazy gardener. <laughs> Mostly what I want to do is put stuff away so that it's not just cluttered everywhere. I don't have pots everywhere and things that need to be cleaned and all that kind of stuff. So, I mean, that's going to be my main focus um, over the next day and a half. Uh, I don't know how much more I'll get done tonight, but we'll see. Um, but yeah, I'll come back here and mow and string trim just to get some nice edges and just kind of tidy up a little bit, but definitely take care of like all the pots and things that are... <laughs> laying around. I have a major washing job I need to do. Um, maybe I'll be able to get, get it done tomorrow and it'll dry during the day and then I can put it all away into the greenhouse. That would be good. Maybe make that my goal for the morning. So thank you for joining me for my early May garden tour here at home in my home garden. I hope you guys are having a wonderful uh, springtime so far. And if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, a wonderful fall my very favorite season. Um, I hope everybody's doing great. And I want to thank you so much for hanging out with me. I hope you have a great time in your gardens and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.